Get out your notebooks, everybody. It's time for a history lesson. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Landon and we are here again today for another Patreon request video from an amazing patron, Nick Nick. Go Nick Nick, go Nick Nick. Hey, Nick 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 Nick. Today, Nick Nick requested that I watch a video called The Most Influential K-Pop Artist in History, Sotaji. The note says this is a quick history of the birth of K-Pop. It explains how Sotaji and the boys broke through and charted a new path for pop music in South Korea. A lot of people say that BTS paved the way, but really, Sotaji paved the way for them, so gotta respect. And we know we've learned a lot about him and his boys. <laughs> we've seen some performances and some covers by BTS too. So today is the day to learn a little bit more about the history. Thank you again so much to Nick Nick for this request. I hope that you guys are ready. Let's do it. This is one of the most important moments in Korean music history. The stage that gave birth to K-pop. K-pop. If you watch Dikiriki TV, you probably have heard of the artist Sateji. Sa he was the leader Sa and main songwriter so, of Sateji Sa and Boys, Sa a trio okay. consisting of leader, producer Sateji, and dancer, choreographers Yijuno and Yang Yansong. He recently collaborated with BTS at his concert, you and he is frequently name-dropped among critics and artists as being the pioneer of K-pop out now today. Yes. Many would name him as the single most important artist in modern Korean music history. But what was it about him that puts him in such a status? Yeah. What made him be Tell considered me. Tell me that everything. influential? Ah, uh, yeah. You must to understand not. why Sateji was such a massive impact, we need to know some Korean history. Yeah. After the Korean War in 1953, South Korea was in rubbles. It was one of the poorest countries in the world and Korean people were struggling to get by. Under the direction of an authoritarian government that emphasized a collective mindset of the people, the Koreans set their focus on economic growth. From 1961 to 1979, the GDP per capita of Korea rose by about 2,000%. Yeah. I remember people saying that it was like, it's it's not, the, the success of a Korea is not something that's been around for a very long time. It's something that has been more recent lately. And just to see it kind of in this timeline too, it's, it's weird to see that like, you know, this is during my mother's lifetime, during even some of my sister's lifetime, that they were still building up to where they are today. So it's not that far out of reach in history. And Korea recorded an economic growth rate of 9.3% per year. In the 80s, Koreans went through yet another military dictatorship. With financial stability already achieved to a certain extent by the 80s, the Korean collective mindset shifted its goal from economic growth to obtaining democracy and freedom. Through multiple democratic movements that grew in size and number, Koreans finally achieved true democracy in 1987 by obtaining direct election rights. My sister was seven years old, With you know, like... With goals of democratic freedom and economic growth all set and done, Koreans had lost their collective goal. And this led to a breeding of a new generation of teenagers that were focused not on their collective goal or ideal, but individualism and uniqueness. Yeah. Yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch, yeah. He just feeling that shit. Raw. <coughs> X 세대에게 패션은 단순한 옷차림 자체만을 의미하지는 않습니다. 이들은 패션을 통해 자신들의 욕구와 자유 분방함을 표출하고 있습니다. 우리 문화 신입이 또 어디 있습니다? 문화 신입이면요, 의외로 좀 섹시한 것도 나고요. These teenagers what of the you late do 80s, it? early 90s lived in completely different environments than their parents had. They didn't have to worry about obtaining democracy or sacrificing themselves for the country's economic growth. They grew up in nuclear families with just their parents compared to the past when extended families living in a single household was a norm. They grew up in big metropolises, in apartments, not in villages or houses. 
With downsized families and the economic structure of Korea rapidly changing, moving was a very common event for these teens. And for them, the local community did not mean much. They did not connect with them. All these factors detached them more and more from the collective and communal mindset that the Koreans of the previous generation had, and it fostered individualism. They were an that, entirely though. different breed of Koreans. However, the music industry failed wow. to recognize this completely different consumer base. Early 90s music was just a continuation of the same stuff from the 80s, ballads and trots. Okay. <laughs> So weird how that changes. This was something wow. that the teens could not relate to. That puts it into perspective. It just was not cool because it was so attached to the generations before who had a completely different mindset from them. Teens were in desperate search for something that represented their ideals, individualism and uniqueness. Something that wasn't what the adults listened to or reminded them of what they stood for, which is establishment and collectivism. Then came Satoshi and Boys. Satoshi's music was just so unique at that time. It was absolutely nothing like what the Koreans were used to hearing in Korean music. This is what the teens were exactly craving for. They wanted something different from their parents, and Satoshi delivered and did way more than that. Broke down this the wall. The music was just so different, heavily influenced by popular American music yeah. at that time. You could tell, it you can hear those synths. Hip hop, rock, New Jack Swing, heavy metal. Mm -hmm. And as one YouTube commenter put it, it was like showing a light bulb to people living on kerosene wow. lamps. A random this ass YouTuber. <laughs> song was absolutely revolutionary. This song also opened the door for Korean It's important rapping. that they at least Rap acknowledge that though. itself was a very new genre at from. that time and was relatively unknown in Korea. Back then, most Korean artists and critics claimed that the Korean language its structure was simply not suited for rapping. Sateji and boys proved them wrong and basically blew out the minds of Korean listeners. Wow. They were craving this. I love that. And they bring in the dance too, which I'm here Although for. Although the difference in sound was not the sole reason why teens were following Sataji and boys. The leader Sataji was the embodiment of something rebellious, something individualistic and anti-establishment. He had dropped out of high school to pursue being a bassist in a legendary rock band Shinami. When the band broke up, he then self-produced his own music with a computer, which is was pretty still, revolutionary yeah, at that time. It's about to say. 1992, right? Yeah. And gathered his bandmates Damn, on his own, nerd, just kidding. <laughs> and Yang Yang to form Sateji and Kids. He managed to start and Kids. catapult this cultural revolution all by himself. And wow. even better yet, on his TV debut, the critics on the show were actually very critical of him. I imagine. <laughs> Of the adults I never understand. <laughs> LOL, if only you knew they the future. They the lowest score ever on that show, further cementing the narrative that Sateji was But the rebellious, I'm sure the rebellion teens and stuff were like, fuck y'all, fuck y'all. Like, this is, y'all don't think they're good? Watch. Just watch. And they did. We know the history. We know what happened. Establishment against the adults. And for teens that grew up without a collective goal or mentality, this kind of success was like a win against adults. It was a win against the establishment. Teens went crazy for Sateji. 
The debut album alone accumulated for 1.8 million albums in sales. Wow. And for the four albums that Sateji and Boys put out during their short career, they accumulated about 11 million albums in sales. And you had to buy them back then. The lyrics of Sateji and Boys were very reflective of individualistic mindsets as well. For example, the song Sushiya from their second album, they talk about how unique they are and how they are unwilling to follow what others do. Amen. The way Sateji and That's Boys why they don't like dressed it. also embodied this mindset very well. The group was the first ever celebrity in Korea to hire a fashion coordinator, which is now a standard in K-pop. Wow. They were very aware to make themselves look as unique and different as possible. It's safe to say that Sateji embodied the individualism of Korean teens at that time and sparked a cultural revolution that spread this kind of mentality all across the country. Mm -hmm. It was a distribution of individualism across the general public. Classroom idea, we heard that cover. Speaking directly to the people at Hayden was not afraid to tackle on social issues in his songs either. Before, it wasn't considered a celebrity's place to really speak up about social issues. Mm -hmm. However, the newly found awareness for individuality led to Sateji being able to voice his opinion in his songs, and people took them seriously. Yeah, of course, not everybody was on his side, but nevertheless, it's hard to admit how much his songs had influence on Korean society. Perhaps the most famous story is about how his song, Come Back Home, made runaway teenagers come back to their homes. Another song that had even more influence to society was this song called Shideyuga. This song abolished pre-censorship in music in Korea. Until 1995, music released in Korea had to have their contents censored by the Korean government prior to release. One of the Sateji and Boy's songs, Siteyugam, failed to pass the censors due to its satirical lyrics. And Sateji, being the rebellious artist that he was, decided to remove all the lyrics from that song and just put it on the album as an instrumental. Stop. <laughs> this led to Petty. the anger of millions of Sateji fans in Korea, leading to the eventual abolishment of pre-censorship the following That's year. That's how you fucking do it. It's That's fair how you to do say it. that Sateji truly gave Korean music the freedom of speech that they enjoy now today. Sateji and Boys disbanded after just four years due to exhaustion in creating new music. However, in that short time, Sateji changed the way Korean music and in the bigger picture, Korean society operates and thinks. His music distributed the idea of individualism yeah. to the mass public and marks a departure from the heavily collectivist mindset that Koreans Better used to it. have. <laughs> Korean music so went from being uniform and harmonious to wild expressions of individualism and uniqueness. <laughs> On top of that, he created a platform of free speech by being the catalyst in abolishing pre-censorship. Amen. In Korean we music. need to give him more credit. I mean, he's the very reason why we can have some of the socially aware K-pop songs we now have today. And these all add up and make Sateji the most influential K-pop artist in history. Imagine your parents hearing this.
This is so reminiscent of the day, man. Give me Beastie Boys vibes, like. Once again, if you like this content, please subscribe to DK TV. And moreover, if you want to support us and making more great videos, please do check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV, where we do exclusive content such as podcasts and also reactions. And thank you, Yay. and I will see you guys next time. See you next time, DKDK. Thank you. Yeah, it was so good to be able to see that in its perspective. To really kind of draw back, you guys have been telling me so much about Sataji and how he really created this K-pop world. But unless you can see it through like the archival footage and stuff like that, like it just, it doesn't feel as real. So this was really that solidifying cap on top that's like thank you dude thank you so much for what you did for this world in order to create the world of music in korea today wow how influential we love that thank you again so much to nick nick for this request i know it's been on the poll for a little bit but i've been excited to see it and i'm glad i did with that being said if you like this make sure you click like comment and subscribe i'll be back with more videos soon but until then love you bye love to know them by name. So, 